you could be forgiven for thinking that I'm deep in the tropics of Queensland, but I'm actually in the subtropics of Sydney on the northern beaches. And this tropical themed garden is an oasis of lushness. The whole plot was designed and planted from scratch. And the idea here is to think about outdoor space in much the same way as you'd look at rooms within a house. Matt Cantwell is the brains behind this homely oasis, which he's planned and nurtured for nearly 20 years, and he's still looking after it. Gosh, so lovely to see you. Great to see you too. What an atmosphere in this garden. It's amazing, isn't it? So as a designer, what's it like to have had a relationship right from the very start and across 20 years with a garden? Listen, I think it's every garden designer's dream. This was quite a bare site when we started with it. There was obviously some of the mature canopy, the surrounding trees, but it was largely a lawn garden. So we got the opportunity to create something from the very beginning, uh, creating the islands of planting that we see today um, and developing that garden over time. So you arrive at a place and it comes to setting up the design. Where do you begin in an area like this? We treat it much like you would probably start the design of a home. Luckily, we inherited these amazing groves of palms and they are effectively like our ceiling. And it's important that gardens have canopy, whether it's through palms or whether it's through trees. And luckily we have both here because they create that sense of enclosure. They provide a more intimate scale what we needed to establish then, the walls, because when we came here, we could see across all of the gardens. Uh, so creating a perimeter of planting to give us that backdrop, and then we get down into the detail. So the mid-level planting and sort of the 1.5 to 3 metre mark, introducing the tree ferns, more palms, you know, the dizzy gothica, the pandanus, things like that, which will bridge the gap between the floor and the ceiling. And then we're working on the details, the flowers and the various plant compositions. And it's much like you would start at home. You, you start with the structural side of the design and, and the layout, and then you just add the additional layers of detail to personalise the space. This is one of the, the, I guess, the islands that we created throughout the garden design. And that enabled us to set up these narrow walkways to experience the planting, to get a little bit closer, to be able to, you know, touch the texture uh, of the leaves and, and feel the variation, you know, the, the different layers of the planting from syngonium on the ground to the silver lady ferns. We've got syngonium starting to climb the palms now, yeah. tenanthes. And it's just really nice to be able to experience these plants at close hand. Now, when you start to do it, I mean, this doesn't get planted this thick. It's grown like that, but then splash, there's a bromeliad there, splash, there's an anthurium there got good old spathophyllum and then the, the big bird of paradise and the red of the ginger just saying well come down here and and you come around and the star jasmine is catching the attention yeah you've put that up against the lilies here and then they're like bringing us towards the trunks and getting you to look back up Yep, exactly. Um, and it's quite a deliberate shift so that we can have a large footprint of the crinomalee surrounding the trunks of the palms and some of the tree ferns. And again, connecting us through to that canopy and always trying to draw the eye further or higher because otherwise there can be a tendency, you know, in some gardens, I feel that this planting is too solid and it blocks you and you can't see through it. You can only wander around it. And in other gardens, it's simply too low and too flat. And that layering can be in, at different points throughout the garden. Um, it may be a mid layer that's, you know, some distance away. And I mean, here, it's like this frame. It's beautifully contained by the trunks. It's like you've created a window to the far landscape. Like we've got that view up to the ridge where you can see yep. all the, the existing bushland. But that funnel of light through there really just entices you a little bit further and draws you on and makes you want to wander through and see more of the garden. Whether you are designing a, a composition of pots on a balcony or a courtyard environment or a, you know, an average size block, these same design principles you can apply everywhere. Even a very narrow garden in an inner city courtyard, those layers that you create, you create a feeling of depth and then you're able to connect with vegetation in the distance. And that could be across the road and a park, but you simply connect with that and pull that into the space that you're working with.
what is a tropical garden without tropical rain? You really cued that for us. Yeah, listen, it's, um, it, it's an important aspect to this garden. Uh, it, we typically receive a fair bit of rainfall here, and the humidity levels can definitely be high throughout summer. So apart from bringing all that goodness to the garden that we need, it just adds that extra layer of drama, the way that the, the, you know, the rain falls through the leaves, you know, sliding down the trunks of trees. It's, you know, don't go inside and hide from the rain. This is just another moment to come out and see it a whole new life. With the benefit of time, knowing that you don't have to get an instant result, there'll be highs and there'll be lows. That's just par for the course. But this is what can happen if we, if we look long-term and, and, and if we're patient. That's really important with a garden, to be patient.